back here at Rainbow Six NAL Doha Cookies. Jacob here with you at the desk, and we're going in to Oxygen versus Xset, a battle between the second and third teams here in the NAL. And uh, this one's going to be fun. We, we know that uh, Xset is dressed to the nines, or maybe not dressed to the nines, they dressed to the, like the seven and a halfs based on what I saw. And given what you we know, saw uh, Foxe wearing, he's dressed the exact opposite. Because the negative 13. That, that so. man's in a hoodie and sweatpants right now, so yeah. It's, a, it's about comfort, that, that's the thing. There are, there are some stakes on the line, but both of these teams go into majors. Let's check out the standings here as we break this one down a little bit more, because Jacob, there still is a little bit on the line as far as seeding going to that major, isn't there? Yeah, so OXG only have a one point lead over X set right now, which means the winner of this game is going to lock in that second seed, essentially regardless, because if you look at that round differential there's only one round difference between OXG and X set which means winner locks in second seed and the loser has the potential to be dropped down to the fourth seed heading into the major because yeah. of the result of the Dark Zero Space Station game and you look at how close that point spread is so you need to win this game if you want to guarantee you have maybe some slightly weaker opponents heading into the major itself because it works like this the number one seed Astralis is going to face the number two three and four seeds from the rest of the of the, the whole R6 landscape and whoever gets that second seed has to play a first seed. So theoretically, Oxygen or Xset could have a team like Heroic in their group or Team Liquid if they yeah. were to win Copa Elite Six and so on and so forth. So seeding does matter a lot in this game and OXG and Xset both need to be on top of their game even if technically this game doesn't matter for too much. Yeah, it's a little bit scary when you look ahead to the major, but uh, let's start talking about the series. Oxygen. Oxygen in particular. This is a team that has looked so good with their new additions, with Yaga and Dream coming in all stage long. Whether they win or lose today, Cookies, they look like a major threat coming into the major. No, no pun intended there, it just kind of slipped out. They do, but DZ had a gut punch for them. And I think that game sticks out. out to me. I mean, that was a game where uh, Dark Zero really took it to OXG. I don't think they really expected Dark Zero to come with the come with so much uh, heat and uh, vibrance. Newer struggled, especially. Yeah. Um, so it might be something if you are Xset, you can watch the film on that one and translate to this game here today. I think you can. It, it's dependent, I think, probably mostly on the battleground, but I do think the fact that Newers has demonstrated he's really good at the beginning of the stage, and then having these slow starts that I feel like are quite uncharacteristic of somebody of his caliber. It might just be like a new guy thing, kind of getting into more of a routine, but he had a couple of games last week where he would go like 0 and 6 and then find a way to pick it back up at the very back end and help save OXG. Not the case in that game against Dark Zero from last week. Obviously not a game that really threatened their position as major contenders so much, so it's not one that they had to put too much stock into. But you do have to wonder how this OXG team is going to work at the major given that kind of inconsistency. And they had that undefeated streak at the very beginning of the stage. That was fantastic. They still look great as a squad overall. These guys are the third best attacking team and the second best defensive team in the whole league. And there are almost no other teams that can safely say that they're in the top four on both attack and defense coming into the major. So when they go there, it's going to be like fantastic. They'll be able to keep that kind of trend going. But how does newer factor in after his first stage and potentially playing in front of a crowd in Charlotte. Looks like he's droning already. Eh? <laughs> yeah. Battery's tweeting. I can't well, a little, little pregame droning. You know. <laughs> that man's sideways. It's got to be a drone, right? That man's been in pro play for all <laughs> five weeks and his Twitter account's already infamous. It's I, I don't know how he did that. Hey, it's, it's about the brand. You know, you, you can play, you can make the plays, but you got to build the brand too, right? Yes, so. Yeah. All right. Cookies, oxygen. I think they got what it takes today. I mean, the thing is, like, you got to take this one seriously, too, because like Jacob was saying, the, the seeding in the major can be very impactful. I mean, they definitely have what it takes, of course. You've got of course. the guy on your screen, Dreamless Life. That guy, pretty good at droning, pretty good at planting. Pretty that good. enables the likes of someone like Newers, maybe someone who struggles at times, maybe someone that uh, can't find those kills, he's trying to force them a little bit. Yeah. Maybe he can reel it back and rely somewhat more on Dream to perhaps you know, guide him in maybe more safely instead of just being a little careless, perhaps. Sure. Yeah, for sure. Well, let's talk about vertical for a moment. We got some stats to take a look at here. Vertical, obviously, a big piece of it. And, and this is what we were saying about a lot of these top teams is that they have multiple threats. Vertical is perhaps the biggest, not only on this team, but potentially in the league. Yeah, right now he absolutely is. Still the number one overall rated player in the whole of the NAL, and he's got second place beat by a full .11 like, yeah. on, on the yeah. scoreboard. It's insane to think of how he was in contention for MVP last stage and then went through SI, had a, a decent run with OXG. They got to a point where they even knocked Dom one key out of the playoffs. And then 
yeah, we're all, all wondering how do these NA teams come back into the fold when they play on the NAL again in Stage 1. Vertical does not seem as though he has dropped off. If you look at how many kills he's got, 92 and 53. He needs 8 kills in this match to cross the 100 point threshold or the 100 kill threshold and he is the only player so far who is above 90 kills period and if you were to get that stat it means you would have had to have had an average amount of kills per game of more than 10 because there's only nine games so it's nice that yeah. he's at this point so keep track of that when you're watching this game because if he gets eight kills it means he cracks into triple digits and he might be the only player at this stage to do so is a is a feat few have accomplished so yet another thing to keep an eye on over on the oxygen side of the arena but on the opposite side we've got xset and xset to me means aggression cookies this team is awesome oh they're they're fantastic youthful bountiful and full of energy and they're dressed well today but i really want them to play in those suits dude i really badly <laughs> want hoping, them to i, I, I honestly, they will why wouldn't you, you know, i can't wait and we have these epic shots here but i can't wait to see if they're still like dressed in it but um you know i think Let's one see. thing i was really excited it. about Oh yeah! Saw. Wait, yes! Oh, oh nice! <laughs> they don't even have jerseys; they're just all in red ties. I mean, uh, like, how kills me is Yaga is like <laughs> a hat. Dude's from 1892. Yeah. They're not X set anymore. Now they're executive set. Yes, yeah, so executive you know, set. That's what executive. the X means. Yeah, yeah. Just X in a stands very... for executive. Now we know. Extreme. They're way. here to take care of business. <laughs> that's what that's what they're wearing this for. Well, they're, they're not here to just action going on there too. They're here to win, and they're here to take control of the situation. You know, it's trying to play against his former team. <laughs> no matter what, doesn't matter what's at stake, you want to beat people. It doesn't matter if you're scrimming, you're in ranked, you want to beat people you teamed with. Oh, yeah. Period. Yeah. It's, it's going to be interesting. I, I love the attitude. I love the attitude for X all stage long. Uh, but they backed it up, you know? They, week, week one was rough, right? Week one, it was like, oh, they got to work on their attack. They got to figure things out. Well, they did. They won, what, like four maps in a row after that? Yeah. Uh, went all the way, you know, it been doing fantastic. Only dropped one since then. And coming to this one, knowing they're going to a major, knowing that win or lose, they're getting there. But again, you can play for that better seeding, and that's going to benefit you down the line either way. Yeah, they, they were one round away from having a six-game win streak post-IGL change when they put Spirits into that role. They yeah. started off the stage, they had two straight losses, no one really knew where to put them, and then suddenly they've rebounded to become the second best attacking team in the league. Guess who they're behind? Only Astralis. The first place team is also the best attacking team in the league, and XS right there there because they're determined to take the early game they want early advantages to be able to push through the rest of the round without concern about additional roamers they want map control f like fast they're going to get it no matter what it takes and that game against dark zero from last week was probably the most pivotal example of that because we went to club a map that you figure dark zero are probably going to have in the bag and yet there are still these guys on exit who are forcing opportunities getting right. dz in really bad spots like isolating roamers clearing people into spots where they can get killed by flank watch operators and it's mayhem on the on defensive sides to try and deal with something like that it's a nice dichotomy in this matchup between a very good defensive team in oxg and an attacking squad like xset so when we're on that half specifically it's going to be lights out all right let's take a look at yaga's stats here too yaga's been putting up some good numbers all stage long cookies want to help us break those down a bit yeah we've talked about how vertical is automatic yaga um, Look at that. Hey, that's a guy. He Look doesn't spread. He doesn't spend a whole lot of time, you know, on the spectator screen. Dead. You know, he's <laughs> constantly participating in rounds, contributing. The cost. I mean, the guy is ever present, and I think that's really important, especially when you know we're talking about a team like I said that. You know, some at times maybe the entry play wasn't as great as we originally hyped it out to be. So it kind of carries itself into the fact that late round someone like Yaga, if you're maybe not winning your own fights, maybe not doing whatever, Yaga's still good in the late round and he's still critical to those executes. Of course, when you're talking about the team that, what is it? Number one attacking rate? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wait, number one attacking rate is Astralis, number two is Xset. And here's the point I'm trying to make. Yaga is in MVP contention, right up there with Vertical. Oh, no I, I, yeah. I mentioned Vertical at a 1.41. Yaga's at a 1.3 flat. They have the same number of entry kills, a 2% difference on cost, and both of them are fantastic in clutch scenarios or 1v3s. Yaga hasn't had an individual game performance, a best of one that stands out as being worthy of like an MVP of the day. He could very well still be MVP of the stage if this performance persists. He's like a pariah. He, he's always there. He's finding a way to really like, like dig into the this squad and sometimes he is the tip of the spear for this X-Site roster. So 
that drip might just be the thing that finally catapults him over. <laughs> if he is able to have a good performance today and vertical somehow slumps, Yaga could then suddenly become the highest rated player on the day. So look at that matchup all day long. Vertical versus Yaga, who does better? And obviously we'll see who wins at the end of it. He's looking pretty smart there. We might have to start calling him Professor X set. Anyway, we're moving out. It's time to find out what map we're going to. It's not going to be Oregon. We know that at least. Well, if nothing else, again, follow the same mantra for Astralis. Try not to go to a map that you've already played. You want to give your opponents as little tape on you yeah, as sure. humanly possible, especially for this X-Set team who still rely on the element of surprise. In this game, I think all of these ones honestly make sense. I do think a team like OXG still unwilling to play bank. They've also banned out Villa every single chance they get, so I'm expecting that they'll probably ban that one at some point here as well. Nope, there it is. Except for their own part, not fans of Skyscraper or Theme Park. They've not taken to any new map that isn't. Actually, they've played none of the new maps so far. They've just decided to stick to the ones that they already understand because that's where Bodega's coaching experience lies. No cafe, no chalet. So we'll come down to just two. It's between Skyscraper, sorry, it's between Border and Clubhouse and Exit have the last ban. If they stick true to form and don't play any of the new maps, they'll just stick to something that they know. It would then put us at Clubhouse instead which is where we're oh, going. Okay. So this arena is quite curious. Both teams have won on this map in the past. This is arguably Oxygen's most dominant win. It came over Mirage though, which we kind of already noticed before Razor was coming out of that squad. They're just not that great of a cohesive unit anyway, mm -hmm. but Xset beat Dark Zero on this map. OXG is a much different beast to Dark Zero, but initially this kind of battleground should be probably the most even place these two teams gonna go into for this game. All right, quick thoughts about the map before we go to predictions. Uh, I personally, X set on Clubhouse. Uh, I remember in the Canadian interview after, it wasn't after the DZ uh, win because I believe they lost, but Canadian spoke on that game and he said, well, maybe, you know, X set, maybe we perhaps let that game get away from us. And I kind of agree with that. I felt like Dark Zero actually should have, could have, should have, would have, whatever. It was like a 7-5. Sure. They were real I close. think there were rounds where Dark Zero kind of let situation that was favorable for them get away from them. And X that kind of benefited from it, I think. X, I think, uh, sorry, I'm, uh, uh, Oxygen will probably have a chance of taking X set on Clubhouse. I'm pretty right. confident in that one. Well, we're going to make you put that confidence to the test in just a moment. But first, we have to find out what our casters have to say about their predictions going into this one. Pengu, Jonah, what do you think? Who's going to take it? I don't know about this one. This is definitely the tough one of the day. You're going with X set? Go with the X. I gotta do it. <laughs> I think cohesive unit, synergy. I think Nurus has been struggling more in the ro in the more recent games, been shut down the entry, and I think that's kind of when OXG don't get the entry, so then they struggle. So I expect the set X to be represented by them and do good. All right. Well, I, I was taking a look at Intero's predictions to see kind of what he thought. Oh he, no. He went. He went with Oxygen, and I was yeah. thinking, you know what? I'm here on his spot. Let me. Let me just do the same thing he does. Please right? troll that, him. that would make the most sense. Please troll but, his picks. I beg but, you. I don't think this is troll. I, I think I'm helping him out here because if you think about the trend, mm. Oxygen, they started off really strong. Yes. They peaked in like week three, then they lose to SSG, and since then it has been a downward trend. Arguably, they haven't been as strong as they were. So why are they going to win? On the opposite side, Xset is trending up, right? You've got Oxygen trending down, you've got Xset trending up. They started out, they started out weak, and now they are at their peak. I, I think right now, Exit at their highest point is going to be stronger than Oxygen kind of in the middle. So why do you think OXG is going to win if X is higher peak than them? No, I don't. I think X oh, is going to win. Oh, thank you. I, oh, I, okay, I okay, okay. Around the okay, okay. Pitch. I All thought right. you were going to stick with Parker. All right, now, now I respect you more. Thank yeah. you so much. Okay, well, the <laughs> casters are in agreement. We, we got there eventually. Uh, analysts, <laughs> what, what do you got to say? Cookies, who do you think it's going to be? Uh, I personally believe that OXG is going to win. You know, both these teams have too many. There's too much X going on here. There's X logos everywhere. I'm just, I, <laughs> it's like the 90s again. Oh, XG is going to win this game, I think. Oh, oh, okay. All right, oxygen for cookies. I'm giving it to OXG too, and there's wow. a very simple basis for this. Hmm. You have this, the, they are the third best attacking team and Exit are the second best attacking team, but we're looking at defenses more specifically. If Oxygen are the third best attacking squad, it means that they can definitely hold their own. Exit are the sixth best defensive squad. They're right there in the middle of the pack where both teams are usually very proficient that's the one place where it feels like Exit might not have the same level of consistency. So I am going to give it to OXG, if only based on that ruling. Interesting. Okay, so we have a desk and casters divided. We'll see who's right, and we'll see who takes the tiebreaker in the coin. It's going to be head, oxygen, tails, Exit. Flipping. Here we go. Oh, 
heads. Looks like it's going to be oxygen for the coin. One and one today for the coin. We'll see again. It is just an inanimate object, so it doesn't have any real opinions. We'll see if it's right or not. We'll see who's better or worse than the coin flip. But until uh, until then, we've got another community poll for you to take a look at. What is the question for today? It is who's your relationship goal? Fox and newers or keto and yoga? All right, or yoga rather. Okay, well, you know, something to think about. Bart, what what can you say? <laughs> what can you say? I don't know. I feel like Fox and newers. There's a little too much yelling going on there. It's a little too intense. It's a fighting couple. They might be a little bit too buddy-buddy, so maybe we do want the other option. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, one of the most exciting matches you have ever seen here on NAL. It's going to be Oxygen versus XZ. It's going to be great. We'll be back with that right after this. Talking into our roster change that we made going into this season, we lost Kino and Yogg to Xset, and then we had to pick up Newers and Dream. The results have shown that we're still maintaining a top four position. Our flexibility has changed drastically from the prior team. Everyone is able to adapt to a situation. Everyone is able to flex to a certain spot. Everyone knows how to play passive aggressive and aggressive at the same time. Yogg and Kino specifically, I think they definitely wanted a change of pace and given the opportunity to play with friends at the highest level to them was kind of a no-brainer. Going through the process of losing Kino and Yogg, you know, there were some rumors here and there, but personally, I didn't really believe anything. Right after invite is when they actually told me pretty much, hey, we're gonna be, you know, leaving the team. And at first, I was obviously very distraught and heartbroken because those guys are pretty much like my little brothers. I spent a lot of time with them and I really enjoy them as people, but obviously, if they wanna make a decision like that for their own careers, I'm not gonna judge them for it and I respect them for it. Fox is pretty much my big brother. No hate towards any of them. Like, I love everybody in auction. Uh, our match against Auction on the last week is probably going to be the one that means the most for me. My old teammates, you know, I want to prove myself and prove that, that I was good for the team. Everybody thought this roster was going to place, like, bottom four. It feels good to prove everybody wrong and, and like, actually qualify to the major. We have five crazy mechanical players. We can adapt pretty well, and our team play and chemistry is through the roof. Our chemistry outside and inside of the game, we're ready for it, you know, I'm confident. We can beat every team. This OXG exit game, if, if it were to happen like two weeks ago, I think it would have been in contention for match of the stage. 
but you know now at the last play day where both teams are already locked in for the major feels like we're gonna see a little different story play out yeah at most it's you know the match for second place slash third slash fourth based on the other games that happens today and if anything i think yark and fox kind of spoke about it it's a match about which roster made the right decision you know yark and kino leaving oxg going to exit exit picking up newer or sorry oxg picking up newer and dream who's the actual better team with these two changes because both teams are looking very very strong so far yeah both teams have had you know such a fantastic performance over the course of the season. Obviously, like I mentioned when making my prediction, you know, both teams have had a little bit of a different path to get here, but both are insanely talented right now and are putting up impressive numbers. We'll get into that in a moment as we dive into Clubhouse. Worth noting these operator bands as we work our way through. The ace first is something we don't often no, see. No, we don't. I, ace is arguably one of the least banned heartbreakers, especially on Clubhouse, where normally we see the Hibana and the Maverick being played out. So I'm curious exactly was that the target ban or more of like a strategical setup. Kai being follow up makes sense when that is off the board. Kai makes your life miserable. So Exit will move both of those operators on the board saying we just want our walls to be opened up, especially now that Ace is not available. Well, that final defensive ban is going to be the Mira. That's not too much of a surprise at all, but it does leave up the Valkyrie. Always worth noting when Valkyrie is left up on the defensive side because typically we're going to see her played almost every single round when that happens. So much intel on the side of the defense now that it would be, it would be criminal not to take advantage of that. No, you're right, and this is something that when you don't play against the Valkyrie very often, when it's actually open, you might forget. And this is something that I have an issue with myself, where you'll be droning, going through a round, you'll get C4 and be like, how did that happen? They have no, oh wait, Valkyrie's open, never mind. And then you realize once you've made the mistake that, okay, every single round now, we need to assume they have the Valkyrie rather than assume that they do not. Because the issue is, on the attacking lineup, you simply do not have room very often to pick up an IQ to then find those Black Eye Valkyrie cameras. So you just have to rely on good droning, good information game, and that's maybe somewhere where OXG, having a dedicated support player like Dream, who's very, very phenomenal at droning, they might benefit once they go on the attacking side, whereas Exit, well, they get to start here, and we'll have to see if they can actually find these cameras, shut down the information game, and then play that regular game where defenders are clueless. Well, as we dive into round number one, just to give you an idea of how dominant both of these two teams have been at their peak this stage, just two weeks ago, Oxygen, when they were clicking, when they were firing on all cylinders, at one point, they had four players, stats-wise, in the top 10 overall in the entire league. Now, Exet are the ones who have that strength. They have three players, Yaga, Diaz, and Kino, three players in the top six. Not top 10. Oh, wow. Top six. All right. It is a dominant team right now, and both of these teams, right, have had such incredible like stats performances individual performances like this could be an incredible matchup and as you saw in the little you know pre-match interview we had there and all those pieces of those several interviews we had both of these teams i mean they clearly want to win this right there's a little bit of a personal grudge there is and i mean Kyle Jacob broke it down where like Vertical is the number one rated player right now. Yawk is not far behind him, so we got some of the literal best players and also arguably best amount of good players in a single team in this lobby right now. So it's stacked to the limit. It's a roam game from OXG on the basement defensive side now, and Dream takes a bit of damage but stays alive. Keeps his C4. Mute wouldn't be a massive loss, but still playing with a man disadvantage is never fun. And so far, Exet, I would say, has done a really good job in this stage, one of the rounds, just taking map control and clearing out rooms they still have a ton of time to work with. Yeah, they did a really good job of forcing those defenders back off the roam. 90 seconds left in the round here, oh. and everyone but Vertical is on the site itself. He heard him. Vertical is tucked in secret, and while he may not have yeah. been spotted by the drone, he's been heard. And Spirits, you can see Z pinging that position. Vertical may not know. His position is known, and now he is an incredible danger if that's the case but it looks like he pops up spots the drone so he'll fall back yeah they could cut him off and hold the run down but there's no support for spirits and laxing actually gets the opening call to yark there's a buck off the board so probably fell to the vertical in kitchen most likely either way it means that oxg they have the advantage they got the numbers and exit now has to work even harder for this round that's a really good kill to get as well because the skeleton key all that soft destruction is removed and because of that exit they've got to force themselves into more uncomfortable position like main stairs. Look at that. Gomez, as he tried to walk his way down, uh, Laxing was lying in wait, and he found that kill no problem. 
thought Kino saw his leg there. I guess he didn't in the end. And Laxing still creeping down bottom main stairs. Has the information, but Spirits is the better gunner. Yeah, Laxing again trying to get aggressive. This time not going to cut it. So he'll fall and exit despite still having a man advantage, a disadvantage. It's only reduced to one. Kino, Spirits, and Diaz now, now gearing up to go for a bit of a push. The only issue is Oxygen. They've got three Nitro Cells to deny this. They've got the angles being held beautifully. Vertical gets two. Newers gets one. And they clean up. Up exit before they could even reach the bomb site. A good start for the defense. That it is. The, the one area in that round where I really want to go back to, and if I was exit, I would want to change it is when you drone out blue and you don't check behind that half wall where Vertical is laying, you know, instead of droning him and then spotting him out, just like tell your team and say, yo guys, I think there's a guy in blue hiding here. I need somebody to come with me so we can kill this guy, make that a five versus four. But Spirits was all alone. Nobody rotated. They couldn't do anything about that information. And instead it was laxing. We got the opening kill onto Yawk on the vertical play. So I feel like Exit had an opportunity there to strike first. But unfortunately, they didn't. Right, a little bit of that indecision, just not quite stepping into action and going for that kill early enough, allowed Vertical the opportunity to sneak back to the bomb site. Yep. We saw how effective that was. He got two of those ending final three kills to give OXG the round. And those small things that against a fierce team like OXG, if you let those opportunities pass by, well, you can get into a little bit of trouble. And we just saw that in front of us. Yeah, we did. Now, no, because Maverick is open for the attackers, there's no point bringing out the bandit. And when that kite being bandit leaves just really the mute on the side here, it's vertical. Who's gonna bring that operator? You're gonna be jamming the walls just to make it make attackers have to use the Maverick torch. You can't just, you know, Hibana or Thermite open the wall. You have to actually go there, torch the top or torch the bottom, kill the jammer, then breach the walls. And it just makes you waste a little bit more time. So, good operator lineup from the side of OXG. Also, keeping the Valkyrie two rounds in a row and laxing an in interview that every member of OXG is so flexible now, and we saw Vertical play Valkyrie round one, but Laxing an Alibi, and now we swat those roles around where now it's Vert on the mute instead, and Laxing getting the Valkyrie. And Vert, aggressive as always, has the 1.5x on that MP5K weapon, is another opening kill from the side of OXG. And that's a very good kill at that. It is Spirits the Finca who is yep. killed early. The Operator, you're really hoping, can hang around for the execute phase of the attack. And unfortunately for Xset, well, they're gonna have to do this one the old-fashioned way with whatever health they've got remaining without any extra possibility of getting that overheal and getting that extra boost as they work their way in. But despite being down one man, Exet are still making pretty quick progress. They've opened up some potential avenues to work their way into Garage itself as they've opened those garage walls. Still struggling to open this platform wall, but now that the Maverick trick has been completed, as we reach that minute 45 mark, Gomez will open that one up with his Sophia impacts from that launcher and well now they've got an avenue into the site if they want it. Yeah, the question is now though, with the finger being gone, you lose two grenades, gone six, finger stems, LMT, you lose a lot of value, is basically my point here. What do you do if you exit? I could be want to go garage, but you go main door instead, and Kino gets shut down by Lysing, who once again comes atop on the roam game, always taking the right decision at the right time. Foxy on this catwalk has the one my discs. There's only two grenades. There's three flashbangs on the side of exit. It's Yogg and it's Diaz, who are both in the garage. They have to work together to clear Foxman's position. Well, they've cleared vertical out, and they've removed that dangerous roamer with all the utility he can bring to the table. But like you said, the focus has now turned, well, to the player prone and flash. It's turned to Gomez, and, or rather, to Foxy, and he gets cleared out almost instantly. I mentioned Gomez because he gets fragged out almost at the same time. Across the other side of the map, it is Oxygen to strike and take down the Zofia. Yaga strikes back though, equalizing us, returning to a two versus two and making this one very doable here for Exet because no longer does Laxing have that explosive potential in his pocket. These smoke grenades, the last piece of utility in terms of plant denial that Oxygen have to leverage. And the one concern now for Oxygen is that Laxing is not near the bomb site. He's down below. He no longer has that C4. If Exet realize this, which Yaga now has, they can turn their attention to this bomb site to get this bomb down, but he's got to get his way up to the site itself. He has the diffuser, and he is working his way up the red stairs. This is very dangerous. The site is available, and he's not going for this plant. Instead, taking these oh. fights, Laxing caught outside, chooses to expose himself. So Exet, turn around and take him down as he vaults through the CCTV window. Such a puzzling round, right? Because Yogg walks up the red stairs with diffuser. That's weird. Laxing jumps out the window in a two versus one as well to commit to the full flank. Also kind of weird. 
I will say the one way that Exit really brought back, back that round was how they cleared Catwalk, right? They didn't even need the grenades from Diaz. They just do a triple flashbang from Yark. Then Diaz walks up the staircase, gets a free clone to Foxy, who is blinded. You keep your utility, you get the kill. And sure, it was a trade. Langsing found the kill across the map into Gomez, but you also got the Catwalk uh, getting shut down on Foxy. But when you are the attackers, getting Catwalk is like your biggest priority. So even if you lose a man in the process, you are still arguably the favorite team. Team, and that's why the score but now is tied up one to one in this matchup and OXG they're not gonna go back to CCTV they're gonna go gym instead and keep changing things up keep swapping operators because now we see a bandit being brought out which is quite rare with Maverick being open and we see the mute and we see the smoke and we see the Omai. Well, some good intel game in that round for Exit as well. You've got to complement their ability to, well, have the confidence to walk up garage stairs. Because yeah. normally, and the reason we see those grenades generally favored to take that bomb site or rather to take that position, is that there can be somebody in cash on green box looking through the CCTV wall, oh. looking all the way down there to <laughs> deny those players from walking up. And speaking of, you know, holding those long angles. It nah. is Vertical who takes that fight. And again, nah. Spirits is first pick. That's got to that's gotta be so frustrating, right? Imagine your Spirits, you die really early previous round. You're like, all right, guys, my time to shot. Oh, I'm dead again, right? You're sitting out for almost six full minutes now. If this round goes the entire duration, you're like five minutes cold now. Your entire warm-up routine basically in the gutter because you've, your fingers have gone cold from watching all these drones the entire time. And Vertical really sending a message about his performance so far in stage one, keeping up with that aggression, getting open and kills three for three so far for OXG. Yeah, wants to leave no to Debate in the MVP conversation. Oh, He's like, I want it. Give it to me. I'm top of this. I'm top of the stats for a reason, and it's not even close. So he'll be looking to continue that. You know, playing on the Wamai right now, continuing to be versatile with this operator selection. It was Valkyrie, then it was Mute. Now it is Wamai as we change bomb sites for the third time, moving over to Jim and Master rather than going for the CCTV and Cash repeat. But CCTV and Cash still an important position because Exet are trying to clear their way through. They've now done so pretty successfully, and now they'll attempt to open up this construction wall with an exothermic charge. The impact trick attempts to come in, and it actually will work beautifully, removing the first exothermic charge, but the second one will go down uncontested, and now Vertical, he's stuck in a corner. He'll have to make a quick escape, and he gets out of there scot-free, a moment that Exit weren't paying enough attention, and, well, that could have been a moment they want back. I do want to say though to praise Kino there because he actually faked the Firma charge the first time, baited out the impact grenade, he picked back up the extra Firma charge off the wall and then saved the second one. So only used one charge, got two impacts, that's why the wall is now opened up because it's one for two value. Now we got to see New Year's inside the office area. Very important room for the defenders because this connects everything together. That's why we often call it, refer to it as connector in competitive play because it connects those rooms. Or actually they want to hold it and most likely Exit will want to attack it. Well, here comes Gomez working his way up, pressuring his way towards Lodgy. Kino is Diaz as well. Stuck in a potential dangerous choke point if there are some smokes or some utility thrown their way. But right now, they're going to be looking to leverage this and get some ground if they can. The flashes will come in to force these defenders back. Newers not in Lodgy itself, but holding a close angle with the MX4 Storm. Now transitioning over to the Alibi and that paying off as well. Foxe with the SMG-11 will find a kill on Tiaga. Kino hits the floor. Diaz soon to follow as Foxe lines up a triple, holding Lodgy with his life and looking good while doing it. Oxygen take their second round. That's a flawless as well. And it all started off the back of Vertical with that opening spawn kill on two spirits. The aggressive entry from their, his team and the Finca most importantly. So we can very simply say here, spirits don't get spawned within the first 10 seconds and maybe X will be better off for it. Most likely playing that full five versus five. But also OXG, they can't keep getting away with this. Right, There has to be a moment in time where they will be on the receiving end of a spawn peak rather than be the ones to keep getting the kills themselves. Well, Oxygen will head back down to the basement. In terms of site selection, we've already seen, you know, a little bit of a surprise from them choosing to go to CCTV and cash. Yeah. But those are the things that I think we can attribute to the Charlotte Major coming up, right? They probably have a bar set up, a bar being surely much more of a viable site than CCTV and cash in this meta. In fact, in the two times we've seen Clubhouse thus far, uh, CCTV and cash only has a 20% yeah. defensive win rate. Uh, and 
you know, bar is something that OXG probably feel comfortable on, but don't want to show exactly how they defend it. You go into the major, you do want to save a couple of things, and even if it's not going to impact your overall play, in these small areas, right, in the site selection, we might see that come through. I think this is a very valid point. And I also do think that CCTV with Maverick Open is, like, the weakest bomb site. You probably go, like, you know, basement or gym first, either or, and then arguably go bar second slash third, because bar is a really underrated bomb site so far. It didn't start off with the best win rate at any given stage, and, you know, EU, Latam, NA, etc. But nowadays, with teams knowing how to defend it, it is getting a higher and higher win rate as time has progressed. Won't see it just yet. Well, I haven't seen all four sides, but maybe we will in this matchup. Maybe Excel will surprise or even OXG themselves. But right now, it's OXG getting active on the map, roaming around, trying to get as much map control as possible, again, on this basement roam. And it's Excel who has to clear it out. But OXG, they have a soft cap in their mind. You see, the timer slims down, Foxy or Vertical, rather, both of them are slowly falling towards the bomb side. And that two minute ish timer seems to be the soft cap that says, everybody get back to side. Foxy, when he finds one more drone, surely will follow as well. And that leaves us to in a five versus five. Yeah, Xset have done a good job at clearing this map quickly yet again. I mean, this is something they did well last time. Unfortunately, they just couldn't transition that into a successful execute. This time, oh. they're going to be hoping to do so with a bit of early aggression. Yaga opening up that dirt barricade and getting sprayed down. Kino steps up, though, and takes down Dream before that teammate could be finished off. A good Finca boost will revive Yaga and enable Xset to go in quickly if they so choose. C4 to slow things down. Spirits gets very lit up here as Foxy takes this fight. Newer is swinging on to Diaz as well. Will win that one. Taking a fight for Oxygen, putting them up a man advantage. Exet, they are in shambles right now in terms of their health. I mean, three players, less than 50 HP for all of them, and time is starting to tick away. Oxygen now are starting to back off, though, because they know that Exet are in a little bit of trouble, so they don't want to give these gunfights to them for free. Yeah, oh, she's playing a nice dance here, applying pressure in the right area at the right time and also falling back on the standing when they have to clear advantage. That's right now. Foxy holding the rotation back B from Moto. The hatch above him is closed. He is safe in this position and he has Laxing on the cross or rather, yep, Laxing on the cross. It's a great beautiful setup here for the crossfire. Laxing's ready for this through the ash wall. He's got the pings. He knows where these attackers are coming from, and he's got Foxy to support this as well. One player will sneak down the stairs without getting punished, but eventually finished off thanks to a swing from Foxy. Foxy goes for two. It's a 4v1. Spirits creeping in from the other side of the map. Nowhere near his teammates to support him. We'll get... Well, lined up by Newers, no problem. Now it's 3-1. to one. Oxygen trying to build this lead as much as they can. So I want to protect, or I rather explain my prediction here, because I went with Exit here, right? Me too. <laughs> and I said, yeah, you too, actually. And I said, I think Exit will do a good job at shutting down uh, OXG on the entries, and Exit will get the opening kills. So far, four out of four rounds, it's OXG who's gotten every single opening kill, and weirdly enough, OXG also in the lead. On a defensive side of Clubhouse, which arguably is an attacker favorite map, if you know how to attack it proficiently. But the issue is, X said they haven't been having the best attack so far, it's been very linear. In that last round, for example, Yawk just randomly opens up the dirt barricade, there's no vertical play in Kitchen, there's no crossfire, there's nothing really but a one versus one engagement. So I really think X are playing a little bit linear, all coming from one direction, not working multiple angles at once, and it's kind of punishing them because one versus one gunfight wise, OXG, they are stacked in that situation. Laxing, king of ratting around, king of only ones. Vertical, king of the entire NL right now domestically. So I think if you're X set, you gotta bring out attacks from multiple areas, you know, 2v1s, use of utility, etc. Because when Exit is in like a 2v2 or 3v3, they look very good. But in the 5v5, OXG looks so much better. Oh, Foxy, hoping to get another one of those opening picks by throwing a little spawn peek out there, but he will be forced to fall back. Vertical will take up this position instead. But I agree with what you said, Nick. I, uh, I'm hoping that Xset, you know, make a little bit of a comeback here. Otherwise, my long convoluted explanation during my prediction, uh, well, that would have been for oh, nothing. Flat. That would have been for nothing, and that was, there it that is. was not ideal. But Again. Some, some good work here. No good one is Garrett's door. No one's Garrett's door, so he just bandit tricks the wall in the garage. This never happens, because you can't do this. You cannot play bandit in garage and actually trick the wall. But Vertical somehow gets away with both, like, three spawn peaks and tricking the wall, because no one from Xset is covering the garage door. No one drone bottom garage. Again, and we're skipping five. steps on the side of Exit, playing very linear, and it's punishing them because Vertical is right there to do it. 
Yeah, getting a little bit clumsy here. So they're gonna have to they're gonna have to work around that. I mean, uh, talk about clumsy. Kino, he thought he again. had a chance, but he didn't at all. Not only was Foxe up above just winning that fight, but Vertical would have quickly traded that and you would have lost your Habana for what? Almost nothing. It looked like Kino just wanted to make that play all by himself while the rest of the team was busy making progress elsewhere. Yeah, I, th I think you're absolutely right. Normally, Exit, there, we talk about their chemistry, their coordination, their synergy. That's not what we're seeing right now. We're seeing individuality, winning 1v1. Sure, Spirit's finally finding a kill for himself or a second kill for himself in this game so far, but there's no team cohesion right now and it's a team oriented map of Clubhouse. Spirit, you gotta go big here or otherwise it'll be a 4 1 scoreline. Oh, but Vertical is in trouble. His position identified in the bottom garage position. Vertical knows this, and well, he's gonna just tuck and run away. Nobody from Exit getting on the garage door soon enough, but Spirits, he's gonna make his impact felt elsewhere. He's Good everywhere. Nade taking down another one, taking down Dream, but Spirits gets quickly felled. Gomez pops in to surprise us, but here's Laxing again to get the trade. The coordination from Oxygen clearly there right now. Every position that one of their players is holding there's somebody else there to support them. Now it's Yaga and Diaz who have to make sure they're playing together now. They've got 40 seconds left and they're nowhere near each other. That's Diaz with the case, dropping it in Garage after he loses that engagement. Laxing pops up from behind and there you have it, another Oxygen round. I, I, I know if Parker was here right now, and this is no disrespect to you, JC, because I like working with you, he would have said that OXG is like a clown car because they just keep coming out of the, of the trunk, right? You fight one player, the second player. You kill the second player, the third player. Because the vertical is all over the map. Top floor, first floor, spawn peeking, bandit tricking. He's everywhere at the same time, and it just feels like you're not fighting five players, but more like nine. And that's terrifying. That that's is terrifying, terrifying, especially for a team that is... Uh, really not putting it all together right now. I mean, normally for Exit, what they do so well, you highlighted the coordination, but like if we're talking about the way each round unfolds, it's like they'll start each round making a little bit of progress, mm -hmm. not a ton. It looks okay. They'll work their way into the execute phase, and then all of a sudden, they just get kills. I mean, they will find a way to just put themselves in the right place at the right time. They'll play together. They're, they'll use that synergy to light up the scoreboard, and out of nowhere, they will just take a round right out of your grasp. They don't usually win rounds all that dominantly. They're usually pretty close, but using that style over the course of two weeks, weeks two and three, they only dropped six rounds. Woo. 28 to 6 round differential <laughs> over two weeks That's using wild. that exact play style. That's the exit we need to see today if they want to take down Oxygen. And right now, it's just we're not quite seeing that in front of us. We're not. And we can argue that they've called up a major, they've, you know, they've accomplished what they wanted to do, but then the players themselves in that introduction interview also said, we want to win and show that we're the better team, that we made the right choice, that leaving OXG was the right choice for Yaku and Kino, and that OXG feel like they're a better team as well with Neurus and Dreams. So I do believe that both teams here are fighting as hard as they can without exposing anything vital for the Charlotte major, and they both clearly want to win. And we have a side swap after this round. Maybe it's just a defensive clubhouse, but we need to see Exit right now stepping up to the task and showing that they are as good of a team as OXG because right now she does look like the better full 5v5 team than that of Exit. Well, OXG, I mean, they're also leaning into a little bit of this individual play, right? Speaking of, you've got Newers <laughs> working his way down in secret, just hunting for a couple of Exit players, anyone who might be extended on their own. But... He's not on the right side of the map right now if he was looking for frags. The rest of Exit is on this west side, pressuring directly onto that jacuzzi wall, directly into bar, and using some vertical destruction from below. You've got Spirits with the nades trying to make his impact felt from downstairs. And now you've got Gomez creeping his way up the main stairs on that nook. I mean, look, he is just trying to hold a couple of angles into Master. He's got a chance oh. here, but Vertical wins that. What a shot from the man himself. And Oxygen, they go up one. I do. It's very once again. Again, everywhere on the map, runs across the map into Master Bedroom, shuts down the flank of the main stair. That was Gomez, who could have made a massive play. Because his gadget time was about to run out, he didn't commit all the way into the bomb side, and that leaves him now in the grave instead. Kino, Yawk, Spears, and Diaz has to work four versus five again. With a minute left and limited resources, they only have two nades on Diaz's side, nothing left on Spirits. 
He's on the main stairs instead, but Verge shuts it down again. Newer's now stepping up. Vertical, he continues to seek these gunfights, and everything is going OXG's way. Yaga and Diaz last alive. Diaz on pretty low HP. Yaga full HP, what lacking utility, and now lacking a teammate. Vertical takes his triple kill. Newer's and Vertical now holding this breach together. Here comes the swing, and it is Vertical with a quad kill, and OXG deliver a flawless round to close out the half. It is 5-1. It is dominance from Oxygen to say the least. It is, and it's the second flawless round and six opening kills. Every single round, opening kill has gone in favor of OXG. They've had two flawless rounds as well. They won the first round, then next they won the second round, but it's been four rounds in a row other than that in this tail end of their first defensive side, and it looked extremely one-sided in almost every single of those rounds. Now we gotta take a step back. We get side swap. X set and L on the defense. They are now arguably in control of what the setup is gonna look like, and the, what the defense have to do now is to make it difficult for the attackers to make the right decision. First though, in the meantime, what's your relationship goal? Foxy and Neurs or Kino and Yogg? This is this is definitely a community poll for the ages. Uh, that, that's a question in and oh. out. And uh, well, it looks like it's a, it's a close one. To be fair, I feel like I feel like we could have changed the poll and said Foxy and Laxing because like Kino and Yogg are like a duo and Fox and Lax is like the duo of Siege almost. So I feel like I feel like OXG got kind of scammed out of that one, to be honest, but yeah, and it I, was close. Fox and Laxing is more of like a, maybe some brotherly love there, maybe like yeah. a father-son situation. Maybe maybe we go with Xset over, over Oxygen in that case. But either way, the community just just slightly favoring Xset on that one. And you know what, maybe, maybe that's the power-up they need. They're all dressed up, they're in their suits, they're feeling confident, they're looking good, they've got the community behind them. Now they need to just make a very impressive comeback. They're currently down four rounds here on a map that at least so far in the NAL this stage has been attacker-sided, yep. not defensive-sided. Again, today is a little bit of an interesting day. We, we could see things shake around in terms of the meta, in terms of how things overall are stacking up statistics-wise, but it will take quite a statistical anomaly for x to pull out the comeback that they are looking to make happen here. I love watching Newer's play, by the way. He's such a mechanical menace when he walks around the map, just flicking random walls and whatnot. Lab Vertical looking to get sneaky. He's not playing the Nook, but he is stealthy indeed. He finds one, almost gets a flick through the wall, but no, a little bit of damage was done. Pistol in hand, no SMG 11. Grenade gets cooked instead, and Spirit stuck in the staircase. Gets capitalized on by OXG, playing so much better as a team. That is team play. It is textbook team play from Oxygen. They isolate those Xset defenders up top. They've got the cutoff they need to prevent the rotation down. Yes, it was pretty individual from Vertical to make that happen, but he did have his teammates down below to come in clutch when he needed it. If that nade didn't kill him, Fox A sure would have. There was a drone at his feet as well, so they had live information. That, that random wall flick was not random from Vert. There was a drone giving information, so yes, he was alone, but the follow-up was there, as you mentioned. That's the important difference between OXG and Exit and Attack so far. Well done. Well played. Now as Oxygen turn their attention to the site, having the roam being dealt with expeditiously, they'll be looking to pressure out Diaz next. He's not playing in blue itself behind the generator, but he is playing close and playing oh. aggressive on that hatch. We will have Gomez get down in the back of Church, but as the Thunderbird working his way to those Kona stations and getting himself revived. No problem. Now it's a 3v5 here, but Vertical coming out of nowhere secures himself a double kill. Takes down Kino, who maybe tried to get a bit too aggressive for his own good. Now it's Gomez. He knows he's got to step up and make some kind of play here. Diaz does as well, but Newer's well, he's holding this angle. He is not going to allow them to get cheeky and get an aggressive play back. Vertical, now it's a triple. Vertical gets down for his troubles, but Newer oh. sneaks in from behind, and OXG are looking fierce right now. This is the no-holds-barred style of Siege that they play so well, and right now that has them at a 6-1 lead over Xset. Xset have not been beaten this badly since week one. No, no, they have not, and... It was another flawless round. That's two flawless rounds in a row. So you end your last defending round as a flawless for OXG. Now you start your opening attack on a flawless with the opening kill as well. 
Like, sure, Vert was injured, but I think that's a clear-cut flawless round if you look at it from, like, a top-down point of view. Like, that was a well-played, timed out from beginning to end. The only thing that was, like, a little bit of a slippery slope, had Vertical not gotten in successfully on the flank, obviously he would have died. But even then, as we mentioned, there was follow-up, there was a drone. OXG obviously orchestrated that ahead of time. It wasn't just a random location for Vertical. He was told to go there, and then the follow-up came through. Now we got to see a CC hold. We spoke about the win rate of this bomb side. What was it? 22% win rate? It's like Something really bad. Ridiculously low. Something yeah. ridiculously low, exactly. 20% according to C. 20%. And uh, this is where you're going to go with your exit on match point. You're not going to go gym. You're not going to go bar. You're not going to show anything spicy. It's a pretty standard, you know, clear cut. Jaeger will mine for catwalk, most likely. Valkyrie information. Smoke shotgun for the toxic babes. And then we lose it for the staircases. It's as simple as it gets. This means OXG, they've seen this 20 times before, at least. And there's even two soft walls in garage, but no spare walls. So I'm gonna assume no spare walls have been put in the master bedroom side of things, maybe in, ba in bathroom upstairs, because they have to be put somewhere, because they're not missing. They have been reinforced somewhere on the map. I believe it's bathroom moment gym, yeah, it is indeed. So it's an extended Roman master bedroom side for X set. That was not a mistake on their end. It is an adaptation on their side. They want to extend and hold multiple areas at once because they know that the catwalk is probably going to fall. But dangerous, of course, because we saw how efficiently Oxygen were able to clear out those extended defenders last time. So they are taking a risk here, except by maintaining that map control, inviting Oxygen to come collect those early kills. But Oxygen, they'll RSVP with a good old no for now. <laughs> they will be attempting to go directly into the bomb site, at least opening up this platform wall. They were very successful with that early, oh. and taking a couple of gunfights here actually starts to favor the defense. Spirits collects a kill. The opener for Xset, something they really need to start doing is getting those opening blows, and Spirits will be on the, well, delivering end for the first time. That's a literal first opening kill for Exit indeed, and that means that, well, Foxy got cut off, that's two grenades gone, but the big impact player here is probably Dream with that single flying spank to start the execute. No smoke grenades on the attack inside, vertical nades going out, not doing any damage really, which puts X in a great position. Kino playing top red, we had a player inside of the catwalk itself as well. Newers, trying to work it downstairs, it's hard. You got Gomez as well, sneaking up on a bit of a flank. Oxygen, Ooh. they may not have identified this yet, and if that's the case, Gomez, well, he could be very detrimental to this attack as it works its way up. I guess Spirits, he's just doing a good job without the support of Gomez. Eventually, he'll get traded out, but he picks up another kill before falling. So this position from Gomez, even more dangerous now that the oxygen numbers are dwindling, their opportunities to watch their flanks are dwindling, and the time is dwindling as well. They're gonna have to start focusing on the site, and that's where Gomez could be the most dangerous. That it is, and Dream doesn't have any smoke grenades on Thermite, important to note, because they have to walk in and clean these angles with their guns blazing. Newers, now, rotating the catwalk breach itself, which means Dreams has to walk into the soft wall and plant diffuser, and there's not that many answers besides Yogg C4 on the defensive side. One Toxic Babe left, 30 seconds. OXG, they can still win this round. Yep, Dream just waiting for the toxic smoke to dissipate, and then he'll likely step his way up, but he just oh. walks his way in. A little bit too premature. Diaz picking up the kill onto Newers at the same oh. time. Puts Dream in a very tough spot. He gets two, but now he falls. 15 seconds. If this toxic smoke goes away, this the revive Claymore. could come up. The Claymore gets a kill, and now it's Gomez, as we talked about, the key player that could open up this round the for time. Exet. He gets a kill. The time is dwindling. Dream needs to, or rather, Vertical needs to step up and make a move, but he will just get felled at the last second. It was, well, a risky play for Gomez, waiting to rotate back to the site so late, but he picked up that kill onto Dream. The 1v1 against Vertical with no time was tough for the sledge to take. So, well, Exet, they had no trouble taking it themselves. A close one, but Exet maintain, at least they'll survive for now. It is a Claymore, of all things, to even back the score there from a 2, or rather get the advantage from a 2v2 to a 2v1. Dream with a nice, beautiful flick onto the soft wall, straight on the head, one bullet headshot, cleans out the player, and now that leaves Exit on the gym bedroom side of things. Arguably a more favorable position to be in than that of CCTV, which they barely just won. It was a good beginning. First opening kill for the entire team of Exit. It was Spirits on the Catwalk Raptors who found it onto the server breach of Foxe, and that put the in that winning position, but you need to do that four more times in a row with no room for mistakes just to go to OT to then play possibly two or three rounds to take it. It's a long way ahead of you. It, it's a long road and it is an uphill climb. Oxygen, 
They lost one round, but it's unlikely they're going to make the same mistakes as they go forward. We're going to see them probably tidy up their flank watch a little bit. They don't want to allow Gomez to stay off site for so long, and to do that unpunished is something that Oxygen will likely like to change around as they move in to yet another match point opportunity. This time we are heading over to gym and bedroom though for Xset, so they're changing it up, albeit slightly. We're still on this top floor, and we will see some presence in this cash side as well. Yeah, and it's Jock who's on the Malusi, has those double impact grenades, which means that you can deny the walls being breached open by Thermite. But the joke's on you because there is no threat on the board. It's Maverick and Ibana, which favors OXG in this position because impacts are doing minimal damage against those two operators. Still, the extension is good. All walls and cash reinforced. Jammers on those walls to cover them as well. But Foxy working that single construction wall instead to gain some line of sight, maybe some leverage later on. A different entry point for the attackers in the regular doorways that you can use. And so far, OXG playing it slow, right? Setting up the flank drones, making sure that nothing goes wrong this time because last round they did play a bit more loose and it was the one round they lost in a long time. All right, since that second round of their defensive half that Xset was able to win. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, like you said, Newers, he is aware that someone is around the corner, so he'll let a couple of those LMG bullets fly, and Gomez will not challenge that, but he will still be elusive. This is the same problem that Oxygen had last round, and it's a problem that they have to decide how they want to deal with. Do you force Gomez out? Do you track him down and take him out? Or do you let him roam free and focus on the site? It's a tough decision to make, but they've got to do it soon because, while well, time is of the essence. And yes, and we now see Gomez playing that flank. Newers gets the vertical grenade kill, but it's straight back from Spirit. Jock follows up as well, giving them the advantage. Newers has been cleaned from below. That means that Exit has control of the entirety of the first floor, and all OXG has is the breach and the windows. Yeah, OXG doesn't have a lot to work with right now. You can see that main stairs is being firmly held by this Exit defense vertical. He's in bathroom, but he doesn't know where to look. Diaz will take him down from this construction doorway. Spirits following that up with a kill onto Dream. That leaves Foxe alone with no real mechanism of actually tracking down these last few defenders. You've got well, Yaga swinging him from top red. You've got Diaz swinging him from construction. He was in a crossfire, and he simply didn't know it. Had no way of getting out of it, so Oxygen will fall again. And Xset stay alive, this time two rounds in a row as they work their way on this comeback. So, this is the thing. Okay, so let, let, let's envision what's going to happen here. Let's say Xset wins this round. OXG probably takes a technical timeout to really sure up that final round. And that reminds me of the last match that we just spoke about, which was the previous matchup of Mirage against Parabellum. So, we're seeing a situation where a team gets a heavy man advantage. And then they start playing a little bit more loose, right? And then it's like, oh snap, we're actually kind of losing this now. Let's take the technical timeout, slow down momentum, figure things out. It's not time for Oryx to do that just yet. They still know they're in it. They still got time. They're, there's room for mistakes. But I do have to wonder about Oryx If they keep losing these rounds the way that they are, there has to be a moment in time where they say, all right, guys, we've had enough fun. It's time to like stop the game right here because we know they can do it. Right? They just have to actually pull through the entire way and not allow those really, really small mistakes to punish them so much because Gomez in the room right now is becoming a problem. It's funny because if you look at the kill count on each side of your screen, like you've got Vertical with 12, Foxe with 8, Newers with you know 9, Laxing with 6. You, you look at Xset, <laughs> they don't have as many kills, no. yet they're winning rounds. Like Oxygen, like their dominance right now, I mean, it's still there. It, it, it's still clearly a factor. They're clearly the frag Oh. Frag forward team that Exet are struggling to deal with, but Exet are starting to catch up a little bit. You know, Spirits starting to heat up. Diaz and Gomez, we saw them contributing heavily over these last two rounds. And if Oxygen aren't careful, well, those kill counts could start to equalize soon enough. Yeah, we saw Foxy almost getting spawn peek from Diaz on that blue window as well. Half HP on him, but he got the finger on the board with three adrenaline surges, which means... Uh, in, over the course of this entire round, Fox is probably going to be full HP, unless, of course, unless that Newers pulls the Spirits and loses the finger early on. But Spirits himself trying to get aggressive, gets shot from the window, shotgun swing in hand. Oh my god, it gets the kill, not just the damage. And that puts Exit once again on the map for the lead. Good old shotgun at range to open 
things off. And taking down Vertical is huge. That's two nades gone. That's Vertical himself gone. And that is exactly what Xset need. It is these opening duels that you talked about, Nick, that Xset are starting to win. And that's why the hope is starting to creep back into their gameplay. We're starting to see that confidence build. And that's how they're starting to make this comeback. Of course, it's not over yet. They Ooh. still need to stall out Oxygen for the remaining 90 seconds. But the fact that Spirits is rotating away, not giving up his life early, that's a great sign. And you got Thunderbird, right? So corner stations, you'll get back to full health. Now it's effectively a five versus four. Also, Newers has started using those adrenaline surges. Fox will be full HP by the next one going out. There's two more left. But you have lost Vertical, your most impactful player so far. Two grenades, it's your only real Vertical player inside of Kitchen, which leaves you to think, well, OXG, you can no longer go for a regular Kitchen attack because you have not, you don't have enough Vertical destru Destruction. You either got to find the kills or find somewhere else to go. And that's why we see Foxy open up this blue hatch as well, I believe, because they know this as well. If they can get the Kitchen Hatch open, that is fantastic for them. There aren't any impacts, so that likely will happen. But all that soft floor, besides the one that just got blown to pieces by a C4, will stay intact because there is no hammer. And as x had start to realize that the majority of that kitchen floor is, well, not destroyed, they will start to realize where Oxygen have to come from. Diaz, you can see, taking up that position in blue because he knew that Oxygen were going to rumble their way over that direction at some point. But unfortunately, he gets himself caught in a crossfire and he goes down. That returns us to a 4v4. With 15 seconds oh. left, though, Oxygen have to get aggressive and start taking these fights. And that puts them oh. in uncomfortable positions and they end up dying. Kino with the the knife kill onto Foxe just for good measure. And Dream finds himself left alone between a rock and a hard place. Spirits is the one to clean him up. And round 10 <laughs> will go the way of Exet. So far, this clubhouse really defensive sided. And Exet are leveraging that as best they can. They've taken three rounds in a row. Oh my god, Foxy dropped and just basically teabagged Kino mid-air and then Kino, he knifed his butt cheek on the way down it looked like and got the kill. Got two actually because he boosted, uh, he vaulted on the boost spot on the box and shot down Newers as well. I predicted a Orgy timeout. There is no Orgy timeout yet. They actually want to go the full distance of a possibility before they want to call it out because if they lose this round, the next one means OT. So we are getting this position where Exit they can start feeling the comeback. Our pressure might be returning to the players. OHD feeling it slipping away as well. And what I will say is on the defensive side, OHD did a very good job at flexing their operator lineup every single round. We spoke about vertical, four rounds in a row, four different operators. Fantastic. Flexing, same story. On the attacks, it's been the exact same thing for every single player, almost every single round. We see Dream hard between Thermite and Ibana based on the bomb side. Usually on Cash, it's Thermite. Usually in Basement, it's Ibana. Makes perfect sense. But Laxing in the Ash, Newest on the Finga, Foxy on Mavic, and Vertical on Sledge has been very, very consistent. And it hasn't been working. So. I had to wonder if they just feel very comfortable, they feel like they can do what they want to do and then just fail to get there, or if they just don't want to show anything really because we do have the Shadow Major coming up very soon. We always got to wonder about saving strats, you know, we right. have to bring that up because that it's a legit conversation because if you're OXG, if you're Exit, if you're Shadow in North America, you are already going to the Major and you know this. So you're not going to throw all your eggs into the basket, showing all your cards rather, right before that. Right, top Silly. four. Top four in the overall stage placement, same amount of SI points. You know, they have yeah. very similar amounts of prize money. And, you know, bragging rights is something, but with a major, with a, a ton of extra a ton of extra SI points with so much more money and international competition on the line, you do generally turn your sights to the bigger goal. But as saving strats is a thing, it's not like it's gonna dramatically change your play style. And it, it doesn't give an excuse for any team that's making any sort of pretty typical mistakes, right? It doesn't excuse Exet for the lack of coordination they mm -hmm. displayed on the attack. And it's not excusing Oxygen for a couple of the interesting decisions that they've made on their attacking side as well. So play style should relatively be similar to what we know these teams can do. We know what they're capable of, and they still need to make something happen here. 90 seconds into this round, and already a little bit oh. troubling for Oxygen. They're struggling to clear out this Raptors position. Spirit still has a lot of active Wamai Magnus to save his life, but he will choose to swing and that gets him killed. Gomez will fall at the same time. Kino is able to get one back onto Newers, though, to keep us close. 
That swings a bit questionable because he had th uh, three magnets to his right hand side, and there was actually vertical grenades that he saw on the icon as well, used to burn those ADSs. But this Valkyrie camera gives information. But the timing's not right. Yoke runs away because they know his whereabouts and his position. Exit. Gotta hold strong, gotta hold on. The bomb set is weak and vulnerable. Four versus three. Kino has to try and find a kill somewhere to leverage back the count. Well, they spotted Yaga off-site. Oxygen, they know that the site has got to be a little weak right now. They could fight this one in a 4v2 if they're quick. So they decided to step oh, up and get grenade. aggressive. Yaga has returned to the site, though. So it is a 4v3. That's an injury. You do have these smokes, and that's going to be an injure and a kill onto Dream. Vertical is gone. Foxe is gone. It is all up to Laxing. He gets two back. This is just turned into a 1v1, but he looks the wrong way. And Diaz gets it done. Oxygen fumbling a huge injury advantage in that round and Exet roll themselves on continue this comeback and now they're only one round away from tying us up we saw uh, we saw <laughs> we saw some exit players shaking hands and saying good job boys you know that was us Kino, phenomenal job isolating targets, finding openings. The toxic babes after doing damage first towards the window, forcing Dream to go into the the bomb side. Second toxic babe comes out, shuts down the plan. Really good coordination now from Exit on their defensive side, like we expect. We just expected that also to happen on their attack, and now it's getting really close. Now we're on this final regulation round before we enter OT or OHG wins it out, right? It is a gym defense. We've been here before. Last time, in the last four rounds rather, Exit has been winning. They've been making this comeback and working for it. In the last four rounds, Exit has gotten the opening kill three of those four times. The round we just saw on CCTV is the only time in those four rounds where OXG got the opening and they lost the round as well. So, TLDR, opening kill heavily puts your numbers in your advantage for the round win. Conversion rate has been so high so far this entire time. So we gotta keep an eye out on what happens in the first minute and who gets the first kill. All right, that'll be the focus as we see how Exet want to hold this site down. We're hit seeing Jim and Bedroom again from them. A minor extension over to the cash side, it appears, but the majority of this defensive setup seems to be geared up into construction. Sometimes we will see teams set up into cash and CCTV, holding both rooms as fiercely as they can. Instead, Exet basically stepping one room closer to the site, not wanting to risk just as much extension as we might normally see. You don't see the rotate to the player on the top of red stairs. Instead, the shield devoted to construction, the one shield that Kino is bringing into play. So as we get underway here, we can see if Oxygen want to go direct again or if this is something that they want to clear out from the other side. Right now, direct seems to be the play. Yeah, it does, and it didn't work the last time, and this wall is not even going to open up in regular fashion. It's almost like we're making a whole square at this point, Foxy, but it works out. We start off this off area. The one issue with this bridge is that you have to vault in, right? So you, get, you make that noise, you're stuck in animation. Typically, when you open up the walls like this, you want to make it a crouch or a walk uh, like level hole because you don't want to be stuck in that vault animation. So that's going to be difficult late round if you want to entry, but the wall's been opened up, it's applying pressure to defenders, and it's making you more uncomfortable as we see the members of XA kind of flicking the hatches, the doors, the staircases, because where actually are Oxygen? And they are nowhere on the map, really. They're outside the building, they're droning, they're on the roof, they're set up, they have not had a single gunfight or confrontation yet, and half the round is over. All right, it looks like they're still trying to figure out where they want to approach from if they are, in fact, going to clear from that east side. But based on the fact that we do not see any substantial rotation at this point, uh, my guess is that OXG want to go pretty direct. Oh. Newers gets down but can't get finished off by spirits because Foxy provides ample coverage. And another kill, obviously found onto Kino by Dream, gives Oxygen a tremendous foothold on this round. All of a sudden, this got cast into a five versus three. And once again, we're gonna have to see Exet fighting for their lives here. Starts off Gomez. well as Gomez gets one, now almost two, but cannot quite finish off Dream. Distracted by the player down below and has to be oh, wary the of it. these nades, but the nade actually blew up the Nitro Cell mid-air, so Dream has been revived. And Gomez, he's gonna finish him off any Anyway, swinging on the breach and Dream says goodbye. 
high. It's a 3v3. All of a sudden, as Gomez has heated up, and just like that, Oxygen, this is still going to be an uphill battle. You've got Laxing trying to work his way in, but Gomez is on a tear. That's three for him, trying to get four, but cannot. Denied by Laxing. Laxing now swinging, and Diaz and Yaga shut them down. The businessmen, the exit, the executive boys dressed up and looking good have completed a five round comeback and we're going to OT. Oh, Gomez. You can put that entire round in just a montage of his, of his own and his YouTube channel because he was fighting tooth and nail, juking grenades, verticality, window players through the C4, but the grenade got caught by the Wamai disc, blew up the C4 mid-air, Finka silently revived from across the map on the, onto the Ibana, but he found the kill, juked out the sledge, got back to the bottom side, and somehow remained alive the entirety of that round and exit. They brought us to OT. It's OXG back on their defense. And now, now we have to see the same exit on attack that we have seen the last five rounds in a row on defense. Because if that's what we're going to see, that's how exit takes it. Otherwise, they have to fight every single round for this and take us the entire duration of OT. But exit, I mean, this is... It really feels like a different team than we saw in that first half. It does, so right? much. They're getting so much more confident in the fights they're taking. They're fragging out. And as we talked about before, the play style that they just displayed on defense, like you said, Nick, if they can employ that on the attacking side and find that gunplay style again, that style that just says, take the gunfights, win them, get those kills, go. If they can do that again, that could put them over the top. They got to go because Spirit is showing the blitz. So um, this might be one of the situations where we're going to see the good old Challenge League Spirit's blitz destruction, but in a professional game between Exit and OXG on the final play day of stage one between these two teams. And it's going to be a third situation, as we can expect, because Blitzy thrives in close quarter combat. The one I really need is Kitchen Verticality, because last time they went dirt, it was Yage on the bug, who solo went dirt, opened the door and died. You need to destroy the soft four and the hatch if possible in Kitchen, so that when you push dirt, you can apply pressure from two areas, and there's no safety nets for the side of the defenders on that chassis area. That seems like that's going to be the case. Diaz working his Maverick work on this dirt wall. And Spirits, well, take it away, sir. Show us what you got. Well, he's got to be wary of the three C4s. There are three Nitro Cells in pocket, and all of those defenders have worked their way back to the site, smartly so, except for, I guess, Fox A, who is still tucked away upstairs. But if these C4s can land, Spirits, well, he's not going to have a fun time. Even as a shield player, those C4s, well, that can mean a swift death. So he's going to have to utilize the support of his teammate, Gomez sitting right behind him. Give him a little bit of extra health to work with. Give him that support with the LMG. And, uh, well, if this attack comes in in a couple of seconds like it looks like it ought to, Oxygen, well, they're going to have to be ready. This one Banshee on the dirt wall opposite of it, it has to be destroyed because Blitz cannot walk on in that quickly if there is a Banshee to stop him. Diaz and a couple of nades here to pressure from up above, trying to get a couple more angles, force these defenders out, yep, and now, like you said, to take out this Banshee. This will be an important nade to look if it lands. It looks like it did, because now Xset will turn their attention to actually walking through the door. A C4 will light up Gomez, but not finish him off. Spirit's now sending his way on in, flash shield in his face. He's just gonna send it to the back of the site. It's a battle, but he loses it. Are you kidding me? Great support by Newers. Diaz gets one back though and takes down Foxe, but all of a sudden, the core component of that Xset attack Decimated. Yeah, no plan either. Nobody dropped the hatch. No follow up. Indeed, now we're gonna pick the part of the main stairs again. It's Laxing holding it down with one, two, and almost all three. But no, it's Diaz who finds the kill instead. Yeah, Laxing got three on that round, but couldn't find the fourth he was looking for. And Diaz now last player standing on Xset to get something done. Dream is on one HP, but he's got two full HP defenders to worry about. They know exactly where he's coming from, and he has too many angles to hold. You've got one player prone over in the blue side of things that's newers he's just going to keep swinging back and forth and making sure that diaz cannot push in safely he cannot hold one angle for any given amount of time because somebody is going to swing him from somewhere it's vertical who gets the kill because well at least diaz tucked away and avoided new the newers the one player swinging him from the corner but a val uh, you know we'll call it a solid attempt from exit but a valiant effort it but was they couldn't quite get it done once spirits died 
I mean, it really was tough to find that again. They did almost everything right. They got a flex pocket strat that, you know, Orkshi didn't see that it was coming because they had Tagger repicked the Blitz. They had no idea. Then they went into the kitchen, soft destruction, got the hatch, drone the bombsite, flashbang, cleared the Banshee, smoke grenades went out. Backers Unfortunately, Spirits off. didn't get the kill he needed, and no one from Exa dropped the kitchen hatch to then start the plant. So ideally what you want there is to use the chaos of the Blitz to get the Diffuser down to then play vertically in kitchen for the post plant. But because the Fuser was never planted, Blitz goes in deep, he dies for nothing almost because he doesn't get a kill, and you're playing 3 versus 5, and you're like, oh, hey guys, we can't do that again because we have no smokes, no flashbangs, let's walk down the main stairs. And we also, what happened, laxing happened. So, valiant effort, nice try, it looked a lot better, just one core element was missing. You don't have Dream, who's planting for you, so he didn't get the plant down. Well, OXG now switched to the attack, and... Of course, this is where they've had the most trouble. Both teams only finding one round on each attacking half. So yeah. if Oxygen want to put this one away and avoid having to defend another bomb site, they will need to find something that works for them finally. Exit electing to defend. And interestingly enough, CCTV and Cash, as we've talked about, a rather weak bomb site in the current meta on Clubhouse. But Oxygen, they haven't had all that much success here before. So they're going to have to find something. They're going to have to get this wall open soon. They're going to have to get these players in the building soon and avoid these pesky roamers, like Yaga, for example, sitting over in bar. And Gomez in the flank, right? Because every round of the defense, it's Gomez flanking around being an issue. Last two times we saw CCTV from Exit, it was Spirits, the key player. Got open and killed basically both times. Last time the bit CC, he swung and sacrificed his life despite having ADSs. So I want to see Spirits play more passive as long as those stay alive. But it's an LMG fight between an MPX, and we all know who wins in that situation. It's Newers who finds the kill onto Yark. One roamer down. And Newer is finding his 12th kill. He is on a heater right now. So are the, I mean, look at these three core components of Oxygen right now, all in, in double digits. And wait a second here. Foxite is in the bomb site. He's getting smoked out, but he still finds one kill. He really Ooh. wants this second, but Diaz is not going to allow that to happen. I mean, talk about coordination issues. Foxe was certainly left out to dry by the rest of his team. Nobody playing immediately on the support. And Dream, who maybe tried to swing after after his teammate died, well, gets quickly taken care of, no problem, thanks to a good shot from Kino. So we are back in an even 3v3. Kino is rather lit up, but, well, we've seen Exit thrive just in situations like these only a couple of rounds ago. Yeah, I believe Kino swung Dream outside, maybe even on the rappel because he said nice shot, so it had to be something crazy that occurred. One Toxic Babe for Kino is the one thing we got to talk about because last time he had all three. No C4s, two impact grenades. If OXG can get in and start planting after this one final Toxic Babe comes out, nobody should be able to stop them, and that's how they want to try and take this round. Easier said than done, though. We've seen Exet just take gunfights and get aggressive and win them, but we're going to have to see that now. Laxing, sticking this plant. Yep. That Toxic Smoke, it was a little too oh, the late. Impact. It was right on time. The impact might have assisted, and the smoke Finishing off Laxing, the Diffuser dropped an exit. Well, they will steal the advantage right back. There's 30 seconds in Oxygen. They need to get a move on now. Newers can provide this coverage, and the difference here is that Vertical can stick this plant unimpeded. Gomez can't pressure from below. It's going to have to be swings from up top. Newers is able to get one, but now that the bomb goes down, he is alone and has to fight against both of these defenders in this retake. Here's the swing. What? Kino with the quad kill just sneaking out from behind. In the wall, no. shotgun in hand. Goodbye, Newers. <laughs> and here we go. Round 15 is on our hands. Oh boy, packed, stabbed, and ship right there. That is what happened that round. And I, I, I 100% believe that the impact made the difference because. I looked at Laxing health before he planted. He was full because they swapped the diffuser to a full health player so the toxic babe wouldn't matter. He started planting with about four and a half seconds left. You should be able to plant successfully unless you finger boost that you take double smoke damage. Either that happened, which we didn't recognize, or the impact from down below did enough damage to interrupt the plant, which then set up exit for a retake, essentially, once the second person started planting. Well done for them. Oh boy! Well, here we are. We are. It's, it's, the, it's the distance. We have gone the distance in this insane matchup. Can you believe this was 6-1? 6-1. Yes. <laughs> and all of a sudden, it is 7-7. Seven, seven. We're going to overtime. Exit have a chance. Oxygen have a chance to put this one away. But Exit 
we cannot we cannot avoid the elephant in the room. They are the ones with the tougher task. Attacking on Clubhouse tonight, for whatever reason, is clearly more difficult. And with only one attacking round under their belt, Xset will have to defy everything that we know about this map tonight. And they will have to get another attacking round and just snag that right out of the fingertips of OXG. I mean, if we're talking about statistical anomalies, I mean, Xset just completed a five round comeback on Clubhouse. So let's. Let's not count them out of it yet, but let's be clear, it is not going to be easy. And the one attack around Exit did win was on a CCTV attack. So, and this is Jim. It's a different kind of beast, different kind of animal. And it's really easy for teams to get stuck inside of Connector Room, not know how to, you know, push the bombsite itself. Laxing has the bandit, can trick the jacuzzi wall. OXG has the easy task at hand, right? As you mentioned, they can sit tight, hold the bombsite. Exit has to make all the decisions, all the problem solving, all the right moves in this round. Opening kill, obviously, very important. If you kill a defender here, there are so many less angles they can cover, and that's going to favor the attackers because you got the main stairs, connector, hatch drops, windows, server breach, connector door. You got so many different entry points. So, as many guns as possible that you can take away from defenders, the better yards are on the attack, especially for this particular bomb side. You got six grenades. We got five left kills. One has been split from Gomez. If you find vertical nade damage or a kill, like they did the last time they attacked, that's going to be a great way to start off the round. But it's not going to be enough. They got to get inside the bomb site eventually. Well, Dream is already going to use one of his toxic smokes yep. at a peculiar moment in the round where the breach hadn't even been opened up yet. That's something he may want back later when Axet actually end up going for this push because like you talked about, this utility oh, there's a second. so vital. There's a second. Again, a little peculiar. Dream wants to make sure that Axet can't get over aggressive, I suppose, but I guess when it comes down to it, that's seriously going to be a big problem. Here comes the final smoke. Now oh. no more toxic smoke. Oh. That nade detonating right on the head. I thought that was going to kill him. It looked like it should have. It, it was, was an right incredible nade. Oh boy, all right. So Toxic Babes have been burned. We have none left so far, a minute left. This heavily favors the attackers because now you cannot smoke off one angle. Dream inside the bathroom has to hold down this area. But everyone on Exit wants to get a piece of this because they want control. Gomez sneaking up the main stairs, trying to catch out Foxe, who keeps swinging back and forth. Oh, he up. makes it all the way up top. Foxe misses the first opportunity. He switches to the shotgun. He knows this is favored at this close range, but Gomez sneaks around the other side. Not going to fall to a shotgun so close. He'll come back. He knows he needs to take this fight at some point because there are 30 seconds left. Exit are running out of options, oh. so here comes Spirits. He commits to the gunfight, and he takes down Foxe. Newers has to back off, giving main control to Exit. Vertical, though, he responds in kind, removing Kino. Yaga trying to step into the site gets denied. Dream and Newers get one each. It is all up to Diaz, and he is no more. Oxygen, hold on. They will take it away in round 15 after fumbling a massive, massive advantage early on. At the end of the day, though, it's an 8-7 victory. They will walk away with it, and it looks like that will secure them second place. Yes, I believe that the winner here, yeah, there it is. Laxon confirms that, I guess, for us. Second place for them, it appears. I did expect a bit of a bigger celebration, I'm not going to lie. When you fight so hard for so long, going the entire distance against your former teammates of Yawk and Kino, I thought they were going to be like, ah, we won, stand up, you know. It's a good celebration. We got Hawks, we got, the, you know, Hawks between former and past teammates, etc. It was a good game, well fought by both teams. Very one-sided for a moment. Great comeback to kind of tie into the story. And then unfortunately, Exit fell short. They could not finish the comeback, but it was a very, very, very nice effort from them. And, and at the end of the day, the, the biggest win is the fact that our predictions didn't look as bad <laughs> as they may have looked initially. So at least yeah. at least that's the case. And, but and both teams look good going to Charlotte. It's the last yeah. game they have, right? So Absolutely. this is the last showcase they had. Max OT, both teams have phenomenal rounds. Next time we see them in Charlotte, that's going to be exciting. And it, it's a great way to set the rhythm, to set expectations high going into Charlotte. And I, I got to say, more than that, <laughs> it's a nice little palate cleanser today. Mm. A nice little warm up for the match yes. to come. Yes. We have got the banger of the day, the marquee matchup coming up next. That is SSG Dark Zero to decide a major spot. So. Stay tuned for that, obviously, but we, of course, will have to break this one down first and we'll toss things back to our analyst desk to do so. A quick break, though, before we get there, so don't go anywhere. We've got more amazing Siege action to come your way.
the Lambo and go drive it like it's stolen. I've been living wild, I'm just going through the motions. Stumbling out the Uber, grab my hand, gave me a nausea. Swimming in your water, but it feels just like the ocean. I cannot really benefit it to you. All of my attention I've been giving to you. Caught up in my feelings, I got feelings for you. Caught up in my feelings, I got feelings for you. On my mind. For two years straight to the face Champagne belly bubbles still won't go away Last year my best man hit a stain with bad face Now he's got a help beyond the water's cold case I wake up with pain some time and never go away And if I find a way to get it when I do it I can live it and forget it Cause I hate how much I love you or I hate how you just put me in my feelings just wish you understood the gravity, but you got no sinners. I guess it's better just to live it and forget it than to live it and remember. I've been wasting my time. I don't know why I can't get you out my mind. Yeah, now I'm so lost. Where do I go? I was in the chase, caught a flat on road. It was all love, X no O. I was feeling rich, but we turned out broke. North Pole, life so cold. Lukewarm love, just took it to the stove. You were bad, news all kind, no pro. We grew apart fast. I guess we was reaping what we sold. In. I guess we was unequally owning. Guess if we was putting on the show. Then. Guess we should have tried to take it slow. Then. Guess I let my feelings take control. Guess I let my demon take the will. Used to think that we'd be growing old. Now I can't believe that it was real. It was back in late December when I did it. I just wish I could forget it. Cause I hate how much I love it. Oh, I hate how I just love to catch a feeling. Told me that you understood the gravity, but now I know you didn't. I guess it's better just to live it and forget it than to live it and remember. are back here at the Rainbow Six NAL desk. Doha Cookies Jacob here with you and we got Vertical standing by in Las Vegas. So, Vertical getting the win for Oxygen. It came down to the wire. You guys got it done. My first question to you though uh, has to do with the fact that you have passed 100 kills on the stage, which is a, a pretty amazing achievement. So I got to ask, is it aim or is it positioning? Which is more important? Uh, I mean, I... I don't think it's either or, to be honest. I think I'm just, uh, I think it's my teammates, to be honest, besides like the the aim and the position. I think I get put into like really good spots and I put myself into really good spots because of my teammates. But yeah, not really. Oh, okay. Oh, you you figured the third one out, coordination. <laughs> I see. All right, interesting yeah. stuff, cool. All right, well, Bert, uh, tell us about Dream then, since you know, Dream is the one who usually has that drone icon in the UI since he's doing all that work. Tell us what he does for you and how much he helps you and how much he helps someone like Newers who struggles at times maybe with, you know, the spacing and all and adjusting. What does Dream do to help you guys along? Uh, for the team, he brings, uh, like, he brings a lot more, like, I guess, like, space for us on attack at least. I know attacks are kind of bad today, but on attack, he opens up, like, a lot of position for us. And uh, it works for me as well, too, because I'm, I'm more of like a roamer on attack. So like if I know a room is clear, I like I trust Dream's call 100%. So I just go off the call and then, you know, I just make, let magic happen, you know? <laughs> yeah. We were
over. Oh, so okay. we, we've not actually been able to like talk to you, I think, on an interview like so far through the NAL. So I actually do kind of want to hear this from you. You were in MVP contention right alongside Hot and Cold for Stage 3 for last year. And you're, you're, you're essentially up there now, especially with the accolades and the stats that you've accrued through this stage. So do you think uh, that th that's something that you can probably like achieve with the results from this stage? Or d is there something else you could have done over this stage to be happier with how you performed? So well, how do you grade yourself? I'm not happy at all with our performance. I wanted first, that's all I wanted. I don't care if I dropped 100 kills. I mean, I could drop 100 kills and be the last team in the in the stage. Kills to me doesn't really mean anything. I just want to win, that's all. All right, well, I appreciate the attitude. One more question before we let you go. Obviously, you got the major coming up. What's the number one focus for Oxygen in the weeks before that happens? Uh, I think our focus leading to this major is uh, keeping our mental strong in the past majors we went we always blow out the first team in majors and then like the second and third game we just lose like to ourselves so I think the one thing we need to focus on is uh mental mental is like the biggest biggest key for this uh, major for us all right mental fortitude I lied I got one more question for you real quick speaking of mental fortitude your opponents showed up today in kind of like suits but like shorts at the same time any <laughs> any comments on the X set look before we let you go <laughs> I like the I like the look. I dig it. It looks nice on them. Are you gonna wear it in the major? Uh, who knows? We'll <laughs> see. If I can uh, if I can get it tailored by then, you might see me in it. Who knows? All hey. right, all right, okay. You got a couple weeks to get it done. All right, thanks for taking the time to chat with us a little bit. Good luck with the major prep. We'll see you there. All right, see you guys. Thank you for having me. All right, there you go. Vertical from Oxygen. Uh, you know, a lot of serious work needs to be done, but hey, you know what? They did work already, too. Second place in the standings overall. Uh, looking pretty solid, but I appreciate that from Vertical, you know? Emphasizing that, yeah, sure, we took second. I only wanted first. I only wanted to win. I kind of like that attitude. I, yeah, he was so disappointed for someone. He was like, three, <laughs> bro, he's three points away from it. You see this? He's, but he's a still, true competitor. But he's still, I mean, he was stern like as a mule saying, man, I wasn't happy with it. Yeah. You know what? Very, I, I respect it. Even though, yeah, I mean, you guys see it. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Not even like if, if those two games that went to overtime, but this one and that one against Parabellum on Cafe didn't swing that way, chances are their fortunes are, are, are very much reversed because yeah. it, it's like, well, what? The butterfly effect being like, or well, is it butterfly or Mandela? The idea that like, if you change one thing, then the entire like, butterfly. Effect. Butterfly, yeah. 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 So it, it, it feels very much like Oxygen could have been in that position. Great start to the stage. And mm -hmm. then. Even if it's a slight fall off, I still feel like OXG d d probably performed above most people's expectations because they had two new people coming in. So. Yeah, well, let's keep the conversation going as we take a look at the stats then, because you're right, they did have two new people came in, and statistically, those players, I'd say, performed pretty well. I mean, look at Newers again, dropping so double, double digits for the kills, 80% cost. Like, the additions certainly worked out, didn't they? I'm loving the fact that, like, well, I think Newers maybe even heard us talk about the fact that he had some of those slow starts, and today, that wasn't a problem. I felt like yeah. he, he, he was always there. It was one kill. I mean, it, it was almost one kill per round because we had 15. He felt like he was very much in the picture, and because you have a game that goes this long, it means you do have more chances to, like, create impact, even if for some reason you're not able to get going uh, in the early round. They were doing great, doing what they had to do. On defense, on attack, I think for both sides, there were some very clear deficiencies. It felt like coordination was off. Not to say that they weren't playing up to their normal standard. I felt like it was still the same X set to OXG style, but something today just kind of felt off about their attacking halves. Uh, yeah, we talked synergy and this and that. The three there, Aquino, Gomez, Yaga were 0 for 10 on entry today. They've been playing together the longest. Those guys have been playing together since like 2012, or <laughs> not 2012, that'd be crazy, uh, 2020. Yeah. CL, and the thing is, I get it. They have a major soon, but that, that was a mess. And it was very apparent that was not their best foot forward and their attacks. If you're an advanced watcher of Siege, but yeah, that was, um, yeah. But hopefully be, they can be put glad that, that kind of game didn't happen at the major, right? Because exactly. if it did, like. Ooh. Exactly. I mean, it, it's like whatever. They, they beat Kino, so, or no, they didn't. For some, sorry. Hmm. For some <laughs> reason, I felt like X at one. <laughs> <laughs> not no, not, not quite, close enough. It was close, but yeah, it was. All right, well, we got some replays to take a look at. We're going to pick round five first to check it out. I mean, I think some of the themes for this particular one was shenanigans, bamboozlement, oxygen maybe getting away with something on this round that they probably shouldn't have. Uh, you you want to break this down for us? Okay, so it's like, you know, I'm talking about it here. Let me show you guys. Since, you know, sometimes I'm talking and I don't make a whole lot of sense, but if I show you a video, 
it makes perfect sense. So this is Bandit in the middle of Garage. Garage is very exposed, right, guys. Now, before this, Vertical actually Bandit tricked just in the middle of Garage, which if you know, you know that is just ridiculous and shouldn't happen. And then Kino decided to just walk in the garage by himself as Havana and uh, try to clear it with, I don't know what. And he just put this gun with his good looks. <laughs> I don't know. But there was no synergy uh -huh. in this attack at all. And Jacob, as you can see, it's just a, it's just a struggle bus from here, really. Yeah, I mean, this is pretty textbook when you're trying to attack on CC, you want Rafters control. Fox is still up there. He had full rotate potential and vert and still can go back up essentially whenever he feels like, and that's before he was creating disruption down in lounge. It feels like for X set, there could have been more coordination here, especially if you're if you're bandit tricking right there on, on the far left panel in garage and you don't have someone where Diaz is right now on your screen covering that cross, it feels like you're doing something wrong. It feels like there are some fundamental things about attacks that just didn't come to fruition. And th this was the case for both teams ultimately, but for X set, they wouldn't have been in that massive hole that they found themselves in, what, 5-1 on, on the first half if it wasn't for those those things really coming to the forefront of this game. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly what I mean. When I say they put their best foot forward, that is that. literally it right there. Like, what? Put someone on the door. Like, you, they said they were the top two teams. Both yeah. these teams, attacking wise, that was not top two gameplay, but we know why. The major is coming up. It's You don't want to give away too much, right? Exactly. But then you did have this kind of like miracle run almost for Xset coming back to get themselves back into the map here. A lot of that happened in round 12, it was kind of one of the highlight ones where, you know, despite Oxygen just wanting to close it out, Xset kept finding ways to keep it going. This one, Gomez, a big part of it. Yep, I mean, you don't want to give him too many kills here, but he's going to go and find them regardless. OXG already have a pretty good advantage. He flips around, finds Dream here too. There's a little bit of miscoordination, I think, on the on, on the game or the, uh, the nade play, because Gomez chugs his nitro cell, but then a well, my disc and a frag grenade in the middle of that firefight means that it doesn't confirm anything. Gomez will go back and find Dream yet again. So he's, he's doing almost everything on his own at this stage, but he's still going to play around windows. He's going everywhere. There's not one specific spot where X-Set can necessarily pin him down. And X-Set, all they have to do with Yaga and Diaz is just continue to hold crosses while Gomez goes insane. He's now cleared their entire south side approach because there were two players who were trying to hold the windows and he killed both of them because while X-Set are, are killing everybody, OXG still have to worry about setting up their crossfires and X-Set disrupt that, especially from what Gomez was doing. Yeah, yeah. you need those window players. Listen, those window players eat their Wheaties on any other day. <laughs> uh -huh. That's an OXG round. So again, another example, they just didn't put their, you can't see my feet right now, but they <laughs> didn't put their best split forward. <laughs> well, they, if you're gonna do it, at least save it for the major, right? I mean, again, this was one of those ones where seeding is important, but at the end of the day, you can't give away too much. And if you're gonna have a sloppy map, better it's now when you're already locked in yeah. than at the major when you really need to get that win in groups or something like that. So a lot to look forward to from Oxygen and uh, Xset in Charlotte, but a lot to look forward to in our next map here as well. This is the one we've all been waiting for. Dark Zero taking on Space Station Gaming. One last little preview, and when we come back from that, it'll be time to get things started, find out who will claim the last spot in Charlotte. Let's check out.